Amy and today I'm joined by Oliver Wedlake, who's Senior Director for Wealth Management Europe at Canoe Intelligence. So welcome, Oliver. It's great to have you on the channel. Yeah, thank you very much, Amy, for having me here today. It's great to be here. Yeah, of course, you partnered with us for the Summit for Wealth Management London, which took place last week. So we wanted to catch up with you post event and just find out a bit more about yourself and Canoe Intelligence. So could you start by giving us a brief introduction? Yeah, sure, absolutely. And it was a great conference, by the way. I really, really enjoyed it. Met a lot of good people. Um, so thank you very much for that. But my name is Oliver, Oliver Wedlake, and I look after our wealth management practice um, and strategic clients here in EMEA for Canoe. Um, and a little bit about Canoe. So Canoe was founded back in 2017. It spun out of a family office called Portage Partners based in New York. And Canoe is still currently headquartered in New York, though we have a large office here in London and several hubs throughout the globe. And incidentally, I also lived in New York for many years and obviously surrounded by a lot of Americans. So might want to excuse some of the uh, American twang that might creep out in a few of these words. But uh, in essence, Canoe is a machine learning platform and we're looking to automate an incredibly complex workflow surrounding anyone who invests into private market funds. So that's whether it's a private equity fund or a VC fund, real estate fund, hedge fund, for all of our clients, you know, one of the biggest challenges that they face is accessing the unstructured data from PDF documents. So these are calls, distributions, account statements, financials, performance updates, basically any document that is made available by the GP. And then this is usually done requiring another manual step, having to log into a data room to retrieve these documents. So Canoe wants to automate that whole end-to-end -end workflow, which starts with the collection of documents from the GP, extraction of data and then the delivery of actionable data at scale to any downstream system that our clients use for reporting or monitoring or accounting practices. That's perfect. Thank you for that. And and given the, the need for that, let's take a step back and think about how the wealth management industry has evolved in the past few years and what's led them to this need for those solutions. Could, could you set the scene for us a bit? Yeah, sure. So I think historically, there just weren't many options for wealth managers or family offices in terms of very tailored technology. And then for those that did embrace technology early, you know, a lot of these systems and, and platforms didn't offer much in terms of flexibility to meet their exact requirements or, or needs for that specific point in time. So they were generally larger, more, more general, trying to solve for sort of the industry problem that they might have thought was the industry problem of the day. But today, I think technology solutions you know, specifically designed for the wealth management and our family office community. And we're seeing really good rates of adoption from this group. And whether that is a focus on reporting or monitoring or trying to provide better client insights, you know, more customized service to their clients based on, on behavior, I think wealth managers now can seek out tech that is really tailored to serve their individual needs, um, which is fantastic. And then the second trend that we're probably seeing is there's more around client preferences. So, you know, whether that is based on a client's you know, digital maturity, their values, risk tolerance, you know, they might have a sustainable or impact focus, um, or just the sort of general sophistication of clients, certainly seeing that within the wealth segment, they are becoming more agile, <clears throat> diverse, and they can complement some of these, you know, varying requirements. So if you take something like you know, private markets, for example, there's been a big sort of democratization within private markets. So access to alternatives is is easier and then allowing advisors to now sort of offer this more sophisticated offering to clients. Um, so, yeah, we have seen you know a good amount of change in the industry. And you know personally, I think it would be great to see some more of these trends continue. I certainly think that the wealth managers could try and close the gap a little bit on some of the family offices. I know there was like a recent report out from UBS um, or a Swiss bank showing that 42% of family offices you know, are in private markets. And then this is probably less than 5% within the wealth segment. So, you know, I think we will see continued change there. Yeah. And what do you think the reasons are for some of the wealth managers perspectives changing on technology? Because you mentioned private markets and gaining access to those mm -hmm. as one of them. Are there other motivational factors here? Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of it can be sort of partly driven by the sort of competitive element, you know, there is a pressure to to stay ahead. And you know, certainly at the conference, it was mentioned a lot, but we're seeing a fair amount of consolidation within the industry. You know, so we're also hearing that clients are becoming you know, slightly more demanding and whether that is 
you know, the more sort of hands off approach that will appeal to that younger generation, that more sort of tech native generation you know, as the wealth starts to trickle down. I think that will be a factor. So, you know, companies will start to have to invest future proof their business. Um, otherwise, you're at risk of trying to play catch up, which is you know, something that we found is incredibly or seem to be incredibly difficult to, to execute well. And then if you couple this with the growing expectation of clients, you know, there is <clears throat> a demand to have more access, more insights, more transparency into how their money is working for them and what are the risks, you know, the fees, strategy, you know, trying to deliver a, a very immediate and, and personal manner. And then finally, I think you can throw in some regulation here. You know, this can be for the good and the bad, quite frankly, but, you know, as compliance teams react to, to regulation and 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 change within certainly Europe here. You know, we are seeing the trend that is putting a much, much greater burden on operational teams' shoulders. So, you know, there's a lot more scrutiny that comes on reporting some of those additional suitability requirements. Um, but yeah, so I think, you know, there's definitely a rise in purpose-built tech solutions, and this really allows you know, teams that can seek these out you know, to solve for the priority that the business is looking at solving today and you know whether that's more granular accurate data or better insights or a slicker ui um you know it's 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 very much there and you know i think people can be confident that the tech can solve for these problems going forward yeah no great outline of the challenges and that's certainly what we're seeing there like you say everything from regulatory the pressure of consumer duty the kind of competitive element of having to stay relevant amongst multiple um competing markets for wealth management uh, in general um, it's all playing into play here. So could you tell us a bit more about the technology solutions that can address that? Because you've kind of outlined a lot of those business challenges, operational areas that might need improvement. How can technology and especially can use, um, you know, offering help with that? Yeah, I think, you know, systemically, there's still a lot of manual work still happening behind the scenes. Um, so certainly a challenge to the industry is, you know, is around, you know, we're still seeing a lot of Excel floating around, um, especially within the private markets. So data is very, very hard to access because it's coming in the form of a of an unstructured PDF. So we find that teams are manually having to extract values like NAVs and unfunded commitments and fees, and then they're entering these values into the different portfolio monitoring systems that they may have or a master spreadsheet. Um, you know, with these client facing um tools so usually this is you know incredibly inefficient so it comes with a very large cost um and there's also a bit of human error can can creep in and you know data that is siloed it comes as no surprise to you guys that it's very very hard to access if it's not in a consistent format you don't know if it's accurate it can lead to some sort of poor decision making so you know when teams find it hard to justify the spend on technology you know it's hard to sort of sometimes quantify what that ROI is right away. I think it's then important to, to partner with a solution and you know, most good technology providers want to do this today is to really get underneath and try and understand the workflow or, or what is the pain point that the business is trying to solve for, you know, what press processes they're looking to change or improve, what is the impact that they're looking to achieve, and then how is this going to fit in with their sort of wider tech stack or their future process and then it's just about aligning with these to make sure that you know we can get this through internally quite frankly and support our clients through that journey trying to get the sign off um, making sure that it reduces friction for the onboarding teams you know make sure that the adoption is good and that's all about good delivery and um and having good good results quite frankly and actually there's something interesting that someone mentioned on a panel one of your larger institutional wealth managers was talking about a big challenge that they had was trying to modernize a legacy system. So they had an incumbent solution that perhaps probably hadn't kept pace with the rate of change, but it was very integrated, very, very hard to shift entirely. But now there's a plethora of technology providers or solutions that can be built on top of an existing tech stack. So, you know, it's very, very flexible. If we look at, um, you know, the use of APIs and cloud hosted solutions, it's, it's, it's very, very easy to, to sort of implement and you can go ahead and, you know, solve for a particular challenge that you're looking to solve for. 
No, absolutely makes sense. And we've definitely seen that the wealth management sector has lacked perhaps in other areas compared to financial services, you know, when it comes to that technology adoption anyway, with with the nature of some of their personal services. But then, like you say, when they have these legacy systems, they've also got those to deal with and having to automate, upgrade them and so on. So it is a big challenge. But like you say, just working with your vendor and collaborating to really understand how to strategically approach it, you know, that's kind of what where they need to head in this day and age to be honest so it makes a lot of sense and I guess um from your side what's coming up in the pipeline that clients would be excited about and that can help them you know move things along and automate and um improve their digital transformation journey yeah sure so I think for our clients you know one of the biggest things that they're looking at is is access to clean data so they want access to a really accurate timely data at scale and then that can be delivered in a very flexible manner to support any number of downstream activities. So you know, thinking about portfolio monitoring, reporting, asset aggregation, some cash management. So having access to that good data, um, you know, really helps you know fuel good outcomes. And we're certainly seeing a trend more to 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 more granular data. So Canoe is now able to provide that look through data, so we can now collect the data on the underlying portfolio companies. So this then brings in new teams, you know, so we're no longer just a middle office back office tool. We can start to bring in investment teams. They can come in, start performing more in-depth tasks, challenges. They can do exposure analysis, build their evaluations of funds. So, yeah, I think, you know, transparency of data, knowing you know where it's coming from, being able to audit back to that particular place in the document where the, where the data is coming from. You know, it's not just a black box. We want people to, to know that the data is validated, it's trustworthy. And then automation. I mean, as we touched on, some of the more manual workflows, if you can trust the data, you can now rely on AI platforms to automate these very, very manual tasks around workflow. It gives you, you know, a ton of efficiency on the operational side, but it also gives you the ability to sort of scale and grow without having to keep adding to operations teams. So it is sort of twofold there and it allows you to sort of bring more solutions to market sort of quicker. That's great and very much needed, as as we've said. So I think closing thoughts, you know, what technology will be most transformative in the industry and what, what do you hope to see long term? You know, even if it's not in the pipeline immediately, like where, where do you think the industry should be heading? Yeah, I think this is an interesting one. And <clears throat> I think it, you know, probably came out of the conference as well, is that people seem to be on the fence a little bit about how AI can can help the industry at, at large um and you know there is certainly from our seat you know we're very very excited about this second wave of ai usage um how not just automating mundane tasks you know like document collection data extraction but how can sort of llms come in and and play a much larger role in defining more successful outcomes for clients um you know if you think about ways that you can query data you can combine more qualitative information with the quantitative data you may already have. The private markets is an incredibly opaque industry at the best of times. And, you know, we sit on a very large amount of data. So you know, it's fantastic for us to sort of build on that foundation for the future. And then, you know, just solutions that are very purpose built, you know, solve for a real challenge facing the industry, um, you know, provider that is able to keep pace as the industry keeps evolving we've got new generations coming through and their needs are, are always changing as well but yeah it's important to provide or to partner with someone who is solving for a problem um that has been identified and you know they're actually have clients who are who are very satisfied using the platform today so yeah um i think it could be good and yeah, if you did want to touch on that sort of second wave of AI going forward. Our CTO did a, a pretty good uh, webinar recently. So happy to take any questions from, from, from anyone offline about this, but yeah, it's very, very interesting. And I think it will be very transformative um, across the industry and probably outside of just the wealth management industry as a whole. No, that's great to know. Yeah, always keen to know about other insights that are out there um, and other reports and so on on this channel. Um, and AI is certainly a hot topic that's coming up at all of our conferences across all the regions that we um, are active in as well, not just in the UK wealth management sector. So I think we'll watch this space 
next year to see you know what what other discussions come out of this and we've certainly seen a move from like you say just limiting it to data collection to actually kind of the analytical um properties that it can be used for in future when it comes to really in-depth financial analysis so um yeah thanks so much oliver for your time like you say people can reach out to you if they want to chat further and learn more about this and speak with the canoe team that's all we've got time for today but it's been wonderful having you on the channel absolutely no thank you very much for having me it's great catching up and hopefully see you again soon yeah of course looking forward to having you at more of our conferences um absolutely. and thanks everyone for watching don't forget to follow our YouTube channel for more content on challenges and opportunities in asset management, wealth management and ESG. And don't forget to give this interview a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button.